Hello everybody and welcome back to Typical City. The summer transfer window is now officially closed and the summer holidays, thank God, are over. The children are all back to school. Well, most of mine are. I've got two. One's three month old running around the house somewhere. I better go and find her at some point. No, don't know what she's doing. Um, I do. She's safe. Don't worry. But my other child back in school and it got me inspired, you know, it really inspired me. Talking about going back to school, I'm not going to keep going on about my kids, by the way. I know you don't want to hear about my kids. What you want to hear about is revenue, money, coming into this Manchester City Football Club of ours. And it's big, big money, huge money. And going back to school inspired me to do a bit of maths. Yeah, I felt like a bit, you know, tutelage. Get more maths out, a bit of fun, you know, £442.3 million worth of maths to be precise. Now, where is this money coming from? How have we amounted, and how can we state another amount of revenue? Now, this is a period of time going back to 2016. Since Pep Guardiola's arrival, Manchester City have sold £442.3 million worth of academy players, not first team players, academy players, are players that have come through the academy. Some actually made them, like Cole Palmer, for example, found himself in the first team, so he technically was a first team player, but where did he come from? He came from our EDS, our, our youth setup, our academy. We are sat on a gold mine that, that is consistently making money year in, year out, while other clubs like Manchester United and Arsenal spent the summer trying to offload players so they could buy more players, players like Harry Maguire who are now sat there coming off the bench against against Arsenal and playing for them. Meanwhile, they've got Jadon Sancho from our academy who we sold, ka kicking off at Manchester United and having a bit of a soap opera with Eric Ten Hag, embarrassing the club, embarrassing himself and embarrassing his manager. He's not our problem anymore. The only thing that came from Jadon Sancho was a pocket full of cash. Thank you very much, Manchester United. So there are swings and roundabouts to the question how are Manchester City managing to uh, avoid financial fair play? How are they complying with financial fair play? Here's the how. Obviously, there are plenty of fans out there that are poorly educated, ill-formed to actually understand. And, and a lot of rival fans seem to think that the revenue that a club makes is generated solely from fans. Now, obviously, that's what they hang their hat on. They rely so much on the idea that Manchester City have no fans. We don't. We only have the fourth highest attendance last season, on average, in the Premier League. Only that. So we'll, we'll, we'll brush that under the carpet. Pretend that, let's say we don't have fans, okay? Just to make, so you can sleep at night, rivals. We don't have fans, okay? We do have sponsorships. And you know why? Go and have a look at the league table right now. That'll tell you why. There's your answer. Because big brands... Oh, don't just stop there. Go and have a look at last season and the season before that and the season before that. Rack up them trophies. What did we win last year? Who is the biggest winner in football right now? It's Manchester City Football Club. There's no two ways about it. The biggest winner in football right now is Manchester City. And what do big brands want to do in terms of sponsorship? They want to associate themselves with big winners with winning mentality and that means money it goes hand in hand nicely together that's sponsorships okay so that that pretty much answers the how but if you're not done there if you're not quite satisfied i've got 402 42 million pounds worth of hopefully satisfactory figures that i can give you and these are all from our academy incredible so yesterday those of you that tuned into yesterday's video to watch the good business video, the transfer roundup of the summer transfer that's just gone by, City's net spend effectively with the likes of Kovacic and um, Gvardiol and Matias Nunes, Jeremy Doku, those were the four incoming players, okay, with a, a quite a large list of players outgoing. I purposefully didn't include the youth academy players in that particular video yesterday because I wanted to highlight it even more so today. So yesterday's spending net spend rather was 106 million that's first team in and first team out okay so that's that was just 106 million net spend that we spent okay now do you want to add James Trafford okay Carlos Borges and Shay Charles three youth academy players which barely they well, well let's start with James Trafford Burnley 19 million Carlos Borges to Ajax 17.2 million and Shea Charles to Southampton for 15 million that is a combined total of 51.2 million pounds okay you, you minus that from the 106 million pounds net spend I gave you yesterday it becomes a total of 54.8 
million net spend. That is our total net spend this year. You could argue there are, there are some discrepancies involved in these figures because of add-ons, things like that. So, for example, James Trafford was sold for 15 million with a, a roughly around 14 million pounds worth of add-ons. We've not received those add-ons yet, so I am including them but almost unfairly in this particular time frame, in this financial window that I'm talking about, those add-ons we're not going to get until next year, really. So the net spend isn't quite 54.8. But just to give you a rough ass range of figures, it's between 54 to 65 million pounds net spend. If you want to minus the add-ons and all the little details between uh, contracts and uh, negotiation deals that happen between the clubs, because not every figure has been completed yet. In terms of the 19 million for James Trafford, for example, we only have 15 million of that right now. But in a nutshell, very good net spend. Impressive. Compared to the other clubs, it's ridiculous. You know, they're embarrassing themselves right now with their net spend. And they keep going on about City ruining football. You know, I've got a massive list 49 players I've got to give you today. I'm not going to read them out. I can't be doing that. You know, I'll get bored to death reading out every single one of these players. I am going to list them on the screen for you. You can start right now. I'll put them on the screen slowly for you right now. For example, Cole Palmer to Chelsea, 45 million. All these listed players, by the way, 49 in total, okay? Ruining football, are we? We're supplying football. We are providing football for these players to go out and flourish, find their feet elsewhere. It's a sad day that they're not able to find their feet at Manchester City Football Club. But at the end of the day, trans uh, Manchester City treble winners... That's the standard now. If you're not good enough, you're not good enough. We can't fake it. And just because we want them to be good enough doesn't make them good enough. You have to ad admit that. We can't ignore the, the, the gap in quality between the list of players that I'm about to give you. And do me a favour, City fans, as well. This one's more for you rather than targeting the rival fans. Find me a, a name on the lists of players I'm about to give you um, that you want back in the City first team. The starting 11. Find one player. There isn't one. There isn't one. Yet here's £442.3 million worth of players we've sold about to be listed on your screen for you. So some of the... I'm going to cherry pick the best ones out. Obviously the big money ones. I'm going... This is in uh, financial order. The highest sale to the lowest sale fee. Cole Palmer to Chelsea, 45 million. Kelechi Iheanacho, quality player to Leicester, 25 million. Romeo Lavia, he's been involved uh, to Southampton. We sold him to 22.5 million. He's arguably one that we could have back. He's one potential player, I think, arguably. Even then, it's like, what, ahead of Rodri? No. So he's not in our first team. Still not answering that question. Brahim Diaz, Real Madrid, 22 million. What's he doing now? He's not tearing up that many trees, is he, over there? Angelino, RB Leipzig, 21.3 million. He even found his way coming back, didn't he? And he didn't find his feet. We gave him a second chance. Didn't work out. Jaden Sancho, and that this includes the Man United sell-on fee. I've included that for a 21.2 million Pounds, James Trafford to Burnley for 19 million. Pedro Porro sporting Lisbon, and this includes the Spurs sell on fee 17.4 million. Carlos Borges to Ayer 17.2. Douglas Louise, Aston Villa 15 million. Uh, Gavin Bazunu, Southampton 15 million. Good bit of business with Southam Southampton. They've heavily uh, profited in mean, football sense, profiting, not financial. In fact, have they? They've been relegated. <laughs> Shade Charles, Southampton, 15 million. Angus Gunn, Southampton, 13.5 million. Enes Younal, do you remember him? We were all talking about him, weren't we? Saying oh, he's got potential, this lad, and disappeared. Villarreal, 12 million. Jack Harrison, Leeds United, 11 million. Aaron Moy, quality player, really good midfielder, Australian lad. Huddersfield, 10 million. Jason Denea, do you remember him? We were crying out for him to play. It was Denea and Van Dijk at Celtic one point, wasn't it? That's what we were saying, that which one should we go for? Should we keep Denea or should we put a bid in for Van Dijk? I remember that. What's he doing now, Denea? You know, not great. Okay, at Leon for 9 million we sold him for. Murich, another goalkeeper we sold to Burnley. Three million this time. And then there's Patrick Roberts at Sunderland, three million. How do you remember all the City fans crying out, he's got to play, Patrick Roberts, is, he's got to play, he's good enough, he's good enough, he's good enough. Is he? Is he? You know, so those that are really worried, I love Cole Palmer, those that are really worried about Cole Palmer, do you think City would have let him go? Look at these lists of players, Cole Palmer's on this list, you know, so... I wouldn't worry too much. There will be a day, there will be a day where we sell a player that we regret. But right now I've got a list of 49 players and I don't regret a single one of them. I do not regret a single one of them. Cole Palmer is the only one on that list that I'm not sure whether I regret, regret it yet or not. Everyone else I'm comfortable. I'm more than comfortable. Especially when I look at the bank account at City. The 442.3 million, you know, ridiculous. Tosin Adarabioyo, quality player at Fulham. Found himself on the bench with Bassey and Ream. 
playing ahead of him in the starting 11 against City at the weekend. 2 million. Jeremy Frimpong. There was no way I was going to get through this video without saying the name Frimpong because it's such a fantastic name. Frimpong. Celtic. 1 million. Uh, Tyler Fletcher. Could we regret that one to Man United? Could we regret that? That's uh, Darren Fletcher's son. Uh, highly uh, sought after. 630,000. The reason I've mentioned him is because he is uh, highly sought after. But how many of these players really, really are you worried about? You look at this list of players I've given you. Are you really that bothered about the player like playing elsewhere and not at Manchester City? And aren't you just happy to look at that £442.3 million? Pounds? And there's your answer, rival fans. There's your answer. Blues, how are we financing our uh, transfer policy? How do they keep doing it? How do they keep getting away with it, those darn blue bastards? How do they keep doing it? Hey, there's your answer. Very, very simple. Blues, what do you think? Why are you impressed? By this, do you want to see more? Are there any players on that list that you would like to see back at City one day? Get your comments in below. I want to hear them. Like and subscribe. Typical City is the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. This is typical.